Good morning. It's Sunday and I'm coming to you guys from my, well, this is like our office that we don't really ever use. So this is Hobbs. Hobbs is my little French bulldog. You guys probably already knew that. What we're going to be doing today is a video that's been long overdue. Um, it's the Natty Verified Challenge. And before I, I jump into anything, I have test results here. Um, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit or a lot of bit about like this challenge just in general, what it means, where kind of must, you know, where being muscular like as men, what it means to us, going deeper than just like, oh, this dude's on steroids, this dude's not, kind of, because I feel like what it's kind of turned to, here, go play. I feel like what it's kind of turned to is this, is this almost this witch hunt, which is interesting to me. It's one of those things, I think it's always been one of those things. Is this person on steroids? Is this person not? It's funny because to me, we don't go around, women don't going around saying, is that girl plastic surgery or is she not? And I'm gonna get this off my chest right from the very, very get go. Um, I'm not taking anything right now. My natural testosterone is so 655 and normal is between 264 and 916, according to whoever made up those numbers um, in the medical field. Free testosterone was 7.8, which is low. Um, normal range is 8.7 to 25.1. So I'm coming to you guys from a place right now, 100% natural. Now I can't claim to be a lifetime natural. When I was in college, I took a pro hormone that was over the counter from a supplement place here in St. George. Um, there was probably six to 10 guys on our team that did it. We didn't think anything of it. It was, we were buying it legally, it was over the counter. But looking back on it, that compound, that supplement, that pro hormone was way more damaging. I shouldn't say way more damaging, but what it did is it gave half the team gyno and it converted readily to estrogen, just like a testosterone would. It was nasty. It created a lot of nasty side effects in people. We didn't, we didn't know. We were, we were 20 year old dudes that wanted to get bigger for football, wanted to get stronger for a multitude of reasons. And we went down to the local supplement store. They had this, you know, we had heard from other guys in the gym that they were seeing great results on it. And we're like, yeah, we want some of that. Not knowing anything about how, what it was gonna be doing to our body or the fact that it was probably banned. Yeah, it probably would've been banned. I can't say for sure, but I mean, I'm sure the name of the supplement wasn't banned. It was called Omnivol. And there's all these, you know, at that time, there's all these different pro hormones out there that were we're doing that. So I can't say I'm a lifetime natty. Um, getting back into this kind of natty verified challenge. The guy who started it, I'm not gonna even mention his name because I don't, I don't believe he's doing it for the right reasons. And I don't think that there is a, an educational side of it that he is trying to promote. I think he's trying to promote his own programs and to kind of gain um, something personally from it, which I don't really, doesn't really jive with. I think if we wanna talk about steroid use in America and in the world, I think we need to get right down to, okay, why, why, do, people, why do people do it? Um, and I think to talk about that, you need to also look at on the female side of things. It's been very commonly documented how women and the image is this image of beauty. We talk about, you know, Barbie dolls. You see it on documentaries all the time, talking about how, you know, we as a society glorify, you know, and, and sexualize women. And it's true, it's definitely true, you know, you see the number, there's over 1.8 major cosmetic surgeries in the US alone. That's plastic surgeries, boob jobs, nose jobs, um, things that you have to go under the knife for. 1.8 million surgeries. Um, we all know somebody probably who had their boobs done, had a nose job. So we start talking about, okay, women want to, to look a certain way. Is it a society, is it pressure we put on them to look that way? Is Instagram helping? There are so many females out there um, that, that you know I even follow on Instagram. And again, I, I don't really blame any any specific girl. It's like that's, we as a society have, have cultivated this environment that we kind of expect a certain level, or you know, we reward women and men. Getting back to that, that look a certain way, that look like the superhero, that look like the Barbie doll, the supermodel, the GI Joe. Um, getting back to Barbie doll and G.I. Joe, those are two of like the oldest, you know, uh, action figures in Barbie. There are two, like, the, the, as a boy you played with a G.I. Joe, as a girl you played with a Barbie doll. And it's been shown that over the years, Barbie, her measurements have gotten more ridiculous and more ridiculous to the point where she really even wouldn't be able to stand up as I read it. 
modern day Barbie, you know, like 10 years ago, wouldn't be able to even stand up. Her, her boobs were too big, her waist was too tiny. She would have a multitude of, you know, back problems and all sorts of issues. Well, G.I. Joe is actually the same. Um, so if you take the original G.I. Joe, which is like in the 50s, and you would have blown them up to, like if you look at his proportions, would have blown them up to a normal size, you would have like 12 inch biceps. That's not a big arm at all. But over the years, 70s, 80s, and even to the 90s, he got more, you know, out of proportion, bigger muscles. At the same time, you know, Arnold was doing commando. Um, and we got these larger than life action heroes. Me growing up, it was Van Damme, it was Arnold, it was, you know, Hulk Hogan, Sting, uh, Randy Macho Man Savage. So I think before we even talk about like story in today's use, where did this idea come, idea come from that, you know, as, as a girl, you need to look like Barbie, and as a guy, you need to look like an action hero. And I think that it's something to kind of, is it something that we did? Is it something that naturally, like people, you know, call it, you know, natural selection, evolution? We want to, our, our, you know, if you're a girl, you look at that action hero and you think, oh, I want to subconsciously, like, oh, I want to mate with that person because, and, and bigger, stronger guys attracted women more and vice versa on the female side. Is it because, uh, girls with larger breasts, tinier hip, tinier waist, bigger hips would attract the same in men. So for whatever reason, I'm not gonna, I don't know that answer, but for whatever reason, these are the body types that have gotten the most attention over the years. And also probably because it's abnormal. Most of the population doesn't have phenomenal, like the 1% of genetics that, meaning if, if you are natural, if you are a girl and, and you're skinny and, and then big in all the right places, that doesn't happen very often. So what happens is through plastic surgery, through supplements, through steroids, people try to get these images. And I think it's, it's, only, it's only human to a, certain, to a certain level. At what level does it go um, into this unhealthy range? And that's really where we're talking about, I think, in today's society because with Instagram, We've pushed that envelope. We expect like there's more and more girls, even young girls, you know, that I think are used to getting positive re or used to getting that, that yeah, positive reinforcement when they post scandalous photos or when they get a boob job, now they're getting more likes. Guys, it's the exact same thing. When you're 20 years old and you're building muscle, we all have people that we follow on Instagram that are just jacked that you know we're on things. Even some of the movie stars today still, I, I, I would bet with my life, are taking things. Now, I digress, this is getting back to, to me and I think, you know, kind of what, what I, I think and all, all the, the, you know, what, in the 80s, I'll just say this real quick, in the 80s, most steroid use was limited to athletes. It was, you know, sprinters, weightlifters. Now, there's 90% of steroid users are just your common, everyday gym goer, weightlifter, wannabe, look good guy. Not even, you know, competitive bodybuilders we all know, 90% um, of them, I read that, 90% of them, that's on the, probably on the lower end of things, um, are on some form of steroids. But I have to pose the question, is it wrong? And I, I don't know how I feel about this one way or another. I think it's a personal decision. Is it wrong? Is it wrong to want to look a certain way? In our society now, again, plastic surgery isn't illegal. You can go into the doctor and say, hey, I want to look like this. Hey doctor, I wanna, I wanna have plastic surgery. Give me a pec implant. I'm a guy out there, give me a pec implant. And they'll do it. Or, uh, you know, obviously girls can, you know, do a lot more plastic surgery than men. Uh, not to say that a lot of men don't get plastic surgery, but, so you can do that kind of, that route that is more invasive surgery. You can do that. Usually, like as of right now with the science, it's gonna look a little bit more weird if you're a man and you have chest implants, I think, or bicep implants, or calf implants, or whatever. I think taking supplements is a way of doing it that is still considered okay. What makes steroids considered not okay is that they're illegal. They're, they're drugs that are not approved for everyday use. Now, that is even getting to be more gray as we start to have TRT, which is testosterone replacement therapy. There is no governing body that says you can or can't give you know, that tells a doctor you can or can't give this person based on what you see, testosterone or not. You know, it's up to a doctor's discretion. So there's there's no real hard and fast guidelines. You know, if they have low energy, if they're, you know, if they're feeling different, if they come back and they have 
you know, there's a range, but you can kind of get a little bit liberal on that range based upon how that person's feeling and, and kind of, you know, either prescribe that testosterone or, or not. And there's a lot of, I think, doctors and health, you know, rejuvenating clinics or aging clinics that will prescribe things that aren't as regulated as we might think they are. So I think that, you know, there's there's ways of doing it out there that's not illegal. Now, if it wasn't illegal, would it be a problem? If, if they if they took off the steroids from, from you know, being illegal today for, for, you know, let's just say, you know, for if you're 21 and you want to take it, you can. Would that change public's perception of steroids? And I think that we're getting into this place and, and kind of with this challenge that, Nobody really knows on Instagram, you know, and, and there's money to be made on Instagram. People are selling programs so, so that no one really knows who is it or who is it. That being said, how many times do people ask the Jenners, what list of procedures? I really like the way you look. What list of procedures? Oh, you've had this procedure? You're a fraud. Do we do that with, with girls on Instagram? Do we, we look at, do other girls look at girls and, and think, oh, I'm going to call her out for getting, and maybe they do, you know, I'm gonna call her out for getting a boob job, I'm gonna call her out. I think as guys, it's one of these things that, it's more of a macho thing, like this dude's bigger than me, I gotta call him out, or, or this dude, he's leaner than me, I gotta call him out. And so I guess what I'm saying is, I think it's really one of those things that I'm more uh, of the type that people are gonna make their own decisions. You know, right now in America, we have this abortion rage that's battling. I personally don't agree with abortion. Um, I think that maybe if it was, and this is enough, whole another video, if it was an earlier term abortion, that's one thing, like within a first week or something. But I really do believe that once a baby has a heartbeat, that is a baby. That is a living, breathing person in there. So we're now, and this kind of bottle, you know, boggles my mind. We're fighting over, and I get it, women's rights and everything like that. I think women also have the right to take birth control, and men, you have an obligation um, to, if you don't want a baby, don't do, you know, wear a condom, make sure you're not, it's a whole different subject. But I guess what I'm getting into, we are giving, we are battling in this country over giving people the right to kill babies in the womb. Um, and that is, to me, one step further even than telling people what they can or can't do with their body. At that point, you know, if, if I wanted to take steroids, it affects only me. If you want an abortion, it affects you and that baby inside of you. So I think that we kind of almost have to have a paradigm shift, but I think what it ultimately gets back to is health. If it's not healthy, now we can't tell people what is healthy and what isn't healthy necessarily, but being healthy should be the ultimate goal. And that's getting back to this Natty Verified Challenge. I don't think that this challenge was was done in a way that was like, hey, let's make health the goal. No, it was, hey, I'm gonna call out people and I'm gonna try to, try to you know, get my name out there for starting this challenge. Let's make health the goal, which is why right now I've gotten these, this test and I, I actually just got another one a couple days ago, though I haven't gotten it back. This one was from a month ago in May. And like I said, uh, my thyroid was down. So thyroid is kind of what gives us ener energy. You have T3 and T4. Both are just a little bit down and I think that's just from years of dieting. Uh, when I got into the bodybuilding industry, I did natural shows, meaning I was polygraphed in your analysis. Um, and then I got into the IFBB, men's physique, where I was told, hey, you need to compete on a high level. That first Mr. Olympia, I wasn't as big as a lot of guys on the stage. Um, I kind of was left year number two, do I compete or do I not? Do I take stuff, do I not? And I eventually got out of competing because it's just, I didn't want to take the list I didn't want to take, I didn't want to, have to feel like I needed to take things because that ultimately went against what I wanted to stand for. Now, I always want to look, I, I'll be the first to tell you um, if there's something wrong on here and the doctor says, hey, Steve, we're going to put you on thyroid medicine. I'm going to say, okay, doc, I trust in you. I believe in you. Um, but my free testosterone, like I said, is lower. So I've been taking HCG, human gonadotropin hormone, not HGH, but HCG. They do give it a lot, to, a lot of times in fertility to to women and to men. So um, I've been actually taking that. Um, they actually even tried to put me on Clomid back in the day, but to me, Clomid gives me this kind of, it puts me in this dark place. So um, I just can never take that. But I chalk this up to years of pro hormones. Like I said, I can't say I'm, I'm, I'm natty for life, um, but right now, definitely am. I'm 
210 pounds. I don't know exactly what my body fat percentage is, but it's one of those things that I want to be as healthy as I can, and I haven't felt healthy. So the last thing I'm going to go do is introduce steroids into the mix um, if it's going to make me more unhealthy right now. So that's where I'm at with my life. It's all about creating, I think, this environment where um, I'm not just as big and as strong. That's, you know, in our early 20s, that's what it's all about as guys, I feel like. How big and how strong can you get? You walk into the gym, what do you bench press? And, you know, at the time when I was playing college football, it was important, not just from a looks perspective, but from an athletic standpoint perspective. I mean, we haven't even talked about steroids in athletes. If you take some kid that is coming from a low income area and you're saying, hey, we can change not only your life, but everyone in your family's life if you get drafted in, you know, top 10 pick, first round, it will vastly change not just their life, but everyone who they know in their immediate family, it'll change their life as well. You don't think that these, these kids out there are going to push the limits with what they can do with their body. I just, I, I feel like it's human nature, but we have to, what we need to do a better job of is educate people. Educate people on why this, and I think it's one of those things is because a lot of doctors don't know exactly how prevalent steroid use is in young men. Um, and when I say young men, I'm talking 20 to 30. There's, there's a lot, I think, of guys out there that have tried steroids, and again, it, it's one of those things that, you know, we talk about body dysmorphia disorder, anorexia, bigorexia, and men, and you're gonna get those guys that, that just feel like they're never big enough. But I think the most, most, most guys when they're young, when they're in 20, they wanna be Arnold, so they just want a little bit more size. They don't wanna be necessarily, you know, a 1998 Ronnie Coleman, but they wanna be bigger. And I think that it's, it's only natural, I think, to look in a direction, just like girls will look in a direction of, how do I get the waist trainers? Waist trainers kill me, because that again is, an, it is not about health. That is pushing your internal organs up. It's making your waist tighter. A corset is not healthy. So we need to stop looking at things of, okay, that's legal, that's not illegal, and start, is that healthy? Because you can always get around legal ramifications. So is it healthy, is it not healthy? It ultimately needs to be the goal. Right now, my body's a little bit off. I'm 34 years old. I'm trying to figure out you know, what it is that I need to, I would love to have my testosterone up into the 800 range. It's not right now. Is it just natural part of life? I know my free testosterone at 7.8 is, is lower than the normal range, so that has to change. So I'm kind of at this point in my life that, you know, I, I, want, to be, I want to have kids. I want to be healthy. And I don't think necessarily 20-year-old kids think about those things. We need to educate younger kids, younger boys about steroids, younger women. We need to educate them about what it is to, what kind of invasive surgeries? What are those doing long term? You know, what you're seeing some girls right now taking out their taking out boob jobs. Well, that there's there's reasons why. We need to educate young kids as to what they're doing with their bodies now and the long term ramifications that it has. So, that's my opinion. Um, natty challenge. You know, I'm still. I, I would say you know I'm about 212 pounds, and for the amount of lifting that I've been doing in the last little bit. I would say I'm still, you know, stronger than 90% of the people out there. But, um, you know, when you're 20 years old, you have a lot of natural testosterone. So I always tell kids, Steve, should I take steroids? I always say this, you have to maximize your potential and you have to understand what your goals are. Not your mom's goals for you, your dad's goals for you. You have to educate yourself and then get as far as you can to maximize your own natural potential. And then what is your goal? Do you want to be the world's strongest man? Do you want to be the best bodybuilder on the planet? Do you want to be Phil Heath? Do you want to be, you know, Dexter Jackson, Sean Roden? Then you're going to have to, there are, you're not, you're not gonna be able to compete on the world's strongest man stage or on, you know, the, the IFBB bodybuilding stage without that. That is, the, that is the cruel, harsh reality because there's other people out there that are willing to do that. So you have to set this up and say, how far am I willing to go? Now, I'm not saying, hey, do whatever it takes. I'm saying that's a, that's the decision for people out there to decide. Ultimately, I stopped competing um, because of that. Now, I might I might feel the, the need to compete again. I might, I'm, you, know, you never say never, but this is where I'm at with my life right now. And I think this Natty Verified challenge is, is, you know, it could be done as a way more to try to educate kids on how to be proactive about um, supplements they take and then also steroid use because it's out there. It's not going anywhere. So let's just educate ourselves on the point. And, you know, and even girls out there, I don't know how many girls watch my videos, but maybe next week we'll talk about how as, you know, as an influencer, 
how we're kind of pushed down paths to only post and only feel good about things when people give us positive affirmation. And a lot of times that positive reinforcement, I should say, is, is only done when you post certain things and how that's unhealthy as well. Because there's a lot of things out there on, on social media that I hate right now that's going on. Um, because I think it's just we're living in this world that only celebrates certain traits and characteristics and it's, it's not a healthy thing. So anyhow, that's my Sunday, Sunday sermon, my one take. I know it was long. Drop a comment in here. I appreciate you guys and let me know what you guys want to talk about next time. I'm out.